G'day there all, um, Neil Tate and one of the little tasks I do up here from time to time is light up and run Merlin. Merlin's a 12 inch gauge steam locomotive as you can see. It's based on a waterworks locomotive, one of three that were built in England back in the 1930s for a waterworks beside the Thames River. This isn't an exact copy of those engines but it's one designed and built by my brother Ken and it's a loose enough type copy of these locomotives with a bit of license. The cab had to be extended to fit people in it, the driver and the fireman, and the locomotive is a little bit longer in scale than what the original ones were. But it's a fantastic little locomotive and it's for all intents and purposes a real steam locomotive just in miniature. Working on 12 inch gauge, it's an 042 design which means that there's no wheels at the front there's four driving wheels and there's a little pony wheel underneath the cab to help support the back end of the engine. The water's carried in the two side tanks and there's coal carried in either side in little bunkers behind the water tanks. That's readily accessible from the cab. The working pressure is about 80, 80 pound. It's very happy working on 80 pound, although it does blow off the safety valves at 100 pounds. It's very happy working at 80 pounds. It's a conventional locomotive, a smoke box at the front, the boiler sitting on the chassis. It's got two cylinders actuated by Welshart valve gear on either side of the locomotive. We'll have a look at that as the day goes on. And if you're all ready, we can go about doing an inspection of the locomotive prior to light up. Okay, there's just a couple of things to do before we go about lighting up the locomotive. Like every locomotive, we've got to make sure that the handbrake is fully applied and the locomotive's in mid-gear. We've got a bit of a supply of light-up wood to start the fire. Before we can do that, we've got a few things we've got to in inspect, and we've got to put some water in the boiler, because up here, at the end of the previous day's run, the boiler is blown down, and the locomotive is stored with no water in the tanks or the boiler. So before we light up the locomotive the next day, or the, for the next time, we have to fill the boiler up with water and also put some water into the tanks. So what we'll do, we'll go through, we'll make sure that the regulator is shut, the steam valves are turned off, the locomotive is in mid-gear and the handbrake is on. Okay, we just do a pre-examination of the locomotive, a rough examination first to make sure that everything visible is okay, that there's no missing parts, broken parts, loose parts, and we just do a visual examination of the locomotive first to make sure that the valve gear is all in place, all the pipe works good. The smoke box, we'll open up the smoke box and have a look inside. That the smoke box is clear, all the tubes appear to be clear, and that the locomotive, from the front end anyway, is at least okay that we can light up. Just a visual inspection to make sure that the blower pipe's okay, the blast pipe's clear, the funnel is in place and tight, and the little cover around the base of the funnel, the little petticoat's okay. Just give it a bit of a clean down. Everything looks okay there. We'll just shut the smoke box door a little bit, and we continue down the other side to make sure, again, that everything's okay on this side of the locomotive as well. Okay, we're just doing a, an inspection again on this side of the locomotive, making sure that everything's in place. Everything's there where it should be. All the pipe work's intact. We've got a drain on the tanks, because we, we store the locomotive with no water in the tanks or the boiler. So we make sure that that's closed. And back into the cab again, we can now go about filling up the boiler with water, and then getting ready to actually light the fire. To put water into the boiler, there's a fitting underneath the right hand side tank. It's just got a standard hose fitting. Click the hose into it. And behind that there's a tap that we have to open. We now go and turn the tap on over beside the shed and that'll pump tank water into the boiler. Okay, we've now got water going into the boiler. To make sure that we haven't got any wastage, we've got two blowdowns either side of the back head of the firebox. We'll shut them. That stops any water draining out from the bottom of the boiler because when we do a, a shutdown of the night before when the locomotive was in steam previously we blow down all of the water and steam out of the boiler by opening these two blowdown valves. I've just shut them 
So now we've got no water draining out of the boiler. All the water is going in to be filling up the boiler. And we'll get about half three quarters of an inch in the old terminology of water in the bottom of the gauge glass. That's a safe level then to light the boiler up. While the boiler is filling up with water, I've got to make sure that the grate is clear because it's hard to shovel out the coals and ash when you've still got a bit of fire left from the night before or the time before it was steamed. So we'll just feel inside the grate and any ash that's been in there from the time before we we'll just put on the ground. Have a nice clean grate for, the, for this day's working. Okay, we've got about three quarters of an inch or so on the bottom of the gauge glass. We just test it to make sure that it's there and it comes back up again. You can see the water level is just about in there, about, about an inch, half three quarters of an inch of an inch in the bottom of the gauge glass on both sides. Before we go through to light up the loco now, we'll just make a final check inside the smoke box to make sure that all the tubes appear to be sealed up beautifully. There's no leakage of water anywhere around the tubes. All the tubes have been expanded into the front tube plate when the locomotive was made. They're copper tubes and they're expanded into three quarter inch thick steel plate for the front and they're all nice and sound. We'll just close up the smoke box door now, make sure that there's no dirt and dust between the two mating surfaces of the, the door and the front of the smoke box. Okay, we're just going to examine inside the firebox for the first little bit of light that we'll get from the cotton waste. Yeah, front, the back tube plate looks beautiful, no problems at all. So we'll drop that down, put a little bit of kindling wood around it, What we do with Merlin along with a lot of other small steam locos, uh, miniature steam locos, during the light up stage we induce a bit of false draft into the smoke box to suck the heat and the flames through from the fire and induces a bit more draft on the fire. So we've connected the hose up and I'll ask my assistant in next door in the shed to turn the, ta the, the switch on. Okay we've got a bit of draft on the fire now, that'll encourage a bit more flame in the fire and little bit by little bit we'll put a bit more wood on the fire. We only use wood to start the fire up. We don't use coal initially until we get about 20-25 pounds per square inch pressure on the steam gauge. Okay after we've finished filling up the boiler, putting water in the boiler, we're now filling up the side tanks. I've just got the hose drilling in a little bit, filling up the side tanks. There's a balanced pipe between the two side tanks which fits underneath, which theoretically gives us the same level in both side tanks. We've got a nice hot firebox now. We've just got a little bit of steam. I'll just drop a little bit of coal in there to, to encourage a bit more heat in the fire. We've just got a bit of steam off the gauge. But we'll wait till we get about 20 pounds and we'll turn the Air compressor off and we'll be on blower then, we'll be on live steam. Okay, when we're generating heat in the boiler that's generating the steam out of the water, the current, there's a water current flow in within the boiler itself called a convection current. And because the firebox is hot, it's drawing the colder water back from it and it's heating up the water and that hot water then is flowing away through a, a convection current of hot water and cold water circulating with inside the boiler and we can see the the water circulation with the, the movement of the water inside the gauge glass if we didn't have steam in the boiler that would be a still level because we've got water that's boiling and we've got this convection current affair happening within the boiler itself, the flow of water within the boiler, 
it's just a natural occurrence. We actually get a differential in movement of water inside the gauge glass, and it's the same evident on both side gauge glasses. Okay, we've got about 20, 25 pound of steam. We'll turn the blower off now, or the air-induced blower. We'll disconnect the hose from the side, lay that aside, and we'll turn the blower on inside the cab. The blower takes steam from the boiler, passes it along a pipe beside the boiler into the smoke box, and directs jets of steam up through the funnel to create the draft now that's sucking the heat and the smoke from the fire, taking it through the tubes. It's creating a partial vacuum in the front of the boiler, therefore creating the flow of heat through the boiler tubes and out through the funnel. We've got about 80 pounds of just over steam pressure now, so I'll just put the injectors on just to test the injectors. Here's the water valve first. We open the water valve. That lets water from the tank flow down through the injector. And then the steam valve, we crack it open. And then pick the injector up. Pull back on the water a bit and you'll hear it start to chirp like a little canary in the cage. Okay, of course the most important part of this locomotive is, okay it works, it goes backwards and forwards and we can blow the whistle later and make it puff along the track. But as far as I'm concerned, my most important bit is that I've got my pies heating up on top of the firebox here. And I just have to rotate them around from time to time, just to make sure that I get the, the right temperature for eating both pies when it comes tucker time. Little device on the side of the cab here is the hydrostatic lubricator which lubricates both side cylinders. Inside here is a condensing chamber where the steam comes in, condenses to water. The water then flows down a tube, pushes the oil up to this pipe here which feeds through to these two valves, one for the left hand and one for the right hand cylinders. They're just opened up to allow steam then to take the delivery of the oil from here from the lubricator sight glasses down through the point of delivery to each side cylinder so it lubricates the valves and the pistons in the cylinders. Okay, we've got to make sure that we've got oil, steam oil, inside the lubricator. We'll take the cap off. Drain the condensate out of the lubricator. There's a little bit of condensate coming out the bottom. That's okay. We'll just put a little bit of oil in the lubricator to make sure. She's fairly full by the look of it anyway. There we go. Okay, here we go. 
bit of oiling around now. Make sure that everywhere is lubricated. Okay, rotating the pies to keep the hot one hot and the, the other one nice and warm. There we go. Okay.